Okay guys, now that we have the driver's console of this boat done, we're gonna move to the bow of the boat where all the work takes place. And when I say work, I mean the guys fishing. So we've unboxed the uh, Hook 27. Everything that's in the box is right here. We've got the unit. We've got the split shot transducer. We have the power cable. And then we have the gimbal bracket and knobs. So the great thing about our new split shot transducer is the ability to mount it in several different ways. The first thing you could do is you can transom mount it just like we did that triple shot. But on this one, we're gonna mount it to the trolling motor. And as you can see, there's a flat surface here that's gonna mount up really nicely on the base of the trolling motor. And then we already have the grooves cut in here for the hose clamps that hold it to the trolling motor. And then not only that, but there is another mounting option that you can do with it if you want. If you wanna mount this inside the hull of a fiberglass boat, all you have to do is rough the surface up here very gently with a fine grit sandpaper. And then you would use the epoxy, a non-metallic, non-porous epoxy, and then you would secure it in the hull of the boat. So then you would have a shoot through the hull, all from one transducer. Okay guys, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the transducer on the trolling motor, and then we're gonna mount the seven inch unit up here at the bow of the boat. Now there's several different mounting options, and the mounting option we're gonna to use today is a bridge that goes over the tray where the foot control goes for the trolling motor. So we're gonna screw this bridge down here and then we're gonna put the gimbal bracket for the seven inch unit up here. That way your unit's right here by your foot control where you're looking when you're fishing. All you have to do is glance down to look at it. You don't have to look off to the side. So it's gonna be right here in the center of the bow. We're not gonna mount the bridge yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open this front control panel where it's got the power for the trolling motor and everything else. And we're gonna get in here so that we can hook up the power for the hook two unit. Now that you've got your screws pulled out, what you wanna do is carefully open this. You don't wanna just yank it open because you don't know how tight these cables are gonna be behind here. So now that we've got in here, we're gonna find out where our power is that we're gonna to connect to the uh, unit and then we're gonna get everything else run. Okay, so we've opened up the front panel on the bow of this boat. We've gotten in here and we've got a couple wires and we're pretty sure these are gonna be the power wires for the unit that we're going to install up here. So I pulled out my voltmeter. And as you can see, we're getting 12 volts here. So that tells me this is the wire that I wanna to use to connect my hook two unit at the bow of this boat. So we're gonna take this split shot transducer and we're gonna mount it to the trolling motor. Now, a lot of people ask, which way should the front of the transducer face? Well, to be honest, it really doesn't matter. Typically, the way I put him is where the cable's gonna be the most protected. So I would put the cable towards the fin and then I'm gonna come up here. If I turn it around like this, it doesn't matter because the transducer signal is a cone that comes out. Now, when it comes to the down imaging though, you have to remember it's kind of like a slice of pie. So instead of being round and circular, it's kind of more rectangle and a triangle as it comes out. So as this, the cone will never change as you spin the head of the trolling motor. But since the down imaging is more of a slice, as long as it's facing this way, it comes out like this. But as you turn the trolling motor, that slice will turn underwater, kind of like this. So again, like I said, it doesn't matter which way the cable faces. You just want to make sure you have it on here secure. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stretch my cable out so that it's not all bound up. Put a little tension on it, let it spin. Get it as straight as possible so that we can start this process. So we're gonna put the uh, hose clamps on here. Again, we're gonna put them through these two slots. They're already built into this transducer. There's one. There's two. Okay, now that we've got our hose clamps through the transducer, we're gonna go ahead and put the ends back together and start the process of getting these tightened down. So I take a couple turns with my screwdriver 
Make sure everything's locked into place. We'll do the same with this one. I actually have a nut driver for my drill that fits these. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here. I'm gonna get these closer to being tighter. Now that we've got them pretty much where we want them, we're gonna go ahead and move them closer to the actual position. So what I'm gonna do now is get the transducer as close to the center line of the skeg because the skeg should be running straight up and down. Now we're gonna go ahead and get these tightened up. As you can see, we've got a good solid mount here. Now that we've got the transducer mounted and our hose clamps tightened up, we're going to go ahead and start working the cable up the shaft of the trolling motor. And what we're going to do is every few inches we're going to put a zip tie to hold the cable against the shaft. So I always start by putting one here at the base. And again, we like to make sure these are good and tight. So I'm gonna use my cable tie gun to get that good and snug. And then the next one I start with is actually still fairly close because I do it right here at the top of the shaft. And I do that because we have a transition area. So that gives us an opportunity to get a little bit tighter because again, like we talked about, we don't want this flopping around on us. So again, I use the gun to get it tight. Once we're done with all this, I'll go back through and I'll use my fine cutters to cut these right off really close at the base so that we don't have any sharp edges. Okay, now that we get up here to where the two shafts meet, the thing we do here is we want to put a loop in here. And we want the loop to be big enough to allow the trolling motor head to spin around without tearing this cable for the transducer. So we've got a, about enough loop in here. Some, again, since this is a fresh cable, it's still got all kinds of stiffness to it. As uh, this trolling motor gets used more and more, this loop will just kind of start looking a little bit smaller and smaller. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work that loop, the cable to the underside of the shaft, because as it comes up the secondary shaft, if you look right here, where the trolling motor clamps into the bracket, there's a space right here that allows you to run the cable up and through here so that you don't have to have the cable going on the outside of the trolling motor mounting bracket. I'm going to lay the trolling motor down and open the bracket. Okay, now that we've opened the bracket here, we'll go ahead and bring this transducer cable. Lift the shaft up just enough to run it through like that. If my hands would work.
Okay, now that we've got the cable run up through the mounting bracket, we've got the trolling motor fully deployed. We've made sure that the motor portion of our trolling motor can fully spin, that we had enough space in our extra loop right here. So we know we've got the space there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue just going and following along the cable here with the transducer cable all the way down to the foot plate. Doing this properly, you can go through quite a few zip ties. Also, while doing this, it's a good idea to keep stretching your cable out to make sure that you're not getting it kinked up or anything like that. Now on these, since they are connected to the steering cable, we don't want to suck them down really tight. We don't want to do anything that might interfere with the cable's natural movement. So we just give them a little snugging up. Just a little overhand tight and then we'll trim them all off. Okay, so now that we've got that all zip tied up, there's a few ways that this can be done. And since there's room in this tray, we're gonna keep this cable. We just took it and made it a nice clean bundle. Again, we're not putting the uh, zip tie on there very tightly. Trim our tag end off. Now we're just gonna tuck this down in the well right here. Where it's out of the way, but we'll still have room to hook it up to our unit. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the power wires and we're going to connect them to these two that I checked with my voltmeter earlier and made sure they were our positive and negative for the front of the boat. So I go ahead and get in here and we're going to crimp that down, pull on it a little bit just to make sure that we're in a good spot. Go ahead and add a little extra crimp there. Again, you want to give it a good tug just to make sure that not coming loose on you. Then we're going to do the same thing with the ground wire. Give it a good crimp, nice tug. So now that we've got our power in here, we'll just go ahead and tuck this back underneath and hear where it fell down in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take this clamshell and it's gonna go right over here just to give us a nice clean finished look. So now that we've got the clamshell installed, we've got our power cable installed, we've got our transducer connected all the way down the trolling motor. Um, we've got our power crimped underneath here. We've double checked it. We've made sure the unit has power. So now we're ready to go ahead and close this front up. So now, before we screw the bridge mount down to the deck, we're gonna go ahead and put our seven inch gimbal bracket on the bridge mount so that it's all ready to go so we don't have to try and screw everything down once we get it screwed down to the deck. So let's go ahead and get this mounted on here. Our bridge mount secured to the deck. We'll go ahead and we'll take our hook too. Put our knobs on it. Go ahead and plug it into the back of the unit.
Now our unit's ready to use on the front deck of this boat. So now you can see we've got the seven split shot on the front of this boat using the bridge so that it mounts over the foot control for the trolling motor. You're looking at about a couple hours start to finish to get a console unit with a transom mount transducer and to get a bow mount unit with a trolling motor transducer on this boat and ready to go. Very easy to install. So now the next thing we're gonna do that's very easy is we're gonna take this boat to the water and we're gonna show you how easy it is to operate these units.